Okay, when it comes to retrieving our pitfall traps, this is pretty easy. Um, again, you want to photograph the area first to make sure you've documented what happened. You want to look and, and make sure the trap hasn't fallen down, that it hasn't um, failed in some way and would be obstructing um, critters access to the trap. So I'm going to very gently pull this off, set this aside. Here's our trap. So I'm going to come in. In this case, it looks like there's a little bit of soil uh, just on the edge. I'm going to try to touch that and bring it back just to make it a little bit cleaner when I go to pull it in. So brush all of that edge soil as much as I can away. Okay. Now for the retrieval, you, whatever you want to use, you can use an old, you know, pickle jar or olive jar or whatever. You could use, you know, plastic glass. It doesn't particularly matter. But you want to have that ready, and and something with a lid, because what you guys use, you're going to put it away. And usually we don't process them the same exact day, so you want to uh, put the um, contents into this container, put a lid on it, and a tape, so we label the site, um, unless you're going to process it instantly. Um, so what I'll do is I'll come here, I'll very gently pull the trap out of the soil. Okay. So the first thing I do is take this up. I'm going to look and make sure that the um, uh, liquid is still in there. First, first thing is that there is liquid in there. Secondly, the liquid is approximately the same color that we put it in. So if you're using antifreeze, it should be that that day glow uh, green glow. Oh look! Oh, so we we miss that little that little grub, Stampede. but uh, but. There we go. So anyway, okay, so so there was liquid in here. It didn't get rained out. No animal came and overturned it or did whatever. And uh, it might be a little bit hard to see from the side, but if I clean it off a little bit and you look, you can see that there's there's stuff um, uh, on the bottom, some stuff floating, etc. So we don't need to worry about that right now. If I were to look in and I were to see like a let's say a twig or a leaf, let's say I had had uh, you know a piece piece something like this in there that was lying there I would go ahead and pull that out so if anything's really really conspicuous that's not a critter that's just uh, gunk twigs etc leaves I would work to try to get that out right now it'll save you a little bit of processing time so if I look in here right now here is a this is a um, looks like a piece of a uh, rosemary or something so I'll pull that out I don't want to spend a lot of time but anything big like that 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 uh, I could easily pull out I would do beforehand Okay, so now we got these guys. I'm gonna put it in my jar. I'm just really quickly gonna give it a little bit of a swirl because I want to make sure that I, I um, any individuals on the on the uh, edges of the container or what have you are in there. And then I'll just give it a little bit of that. Okay, now we look in here and we have some, in, in my case, some uh, fines, some dirt that went in there. So we got to make sure that there's no ants or little critters in there. I can just dump this whole thing in there, but generally speaking, I like to, to pour it off the liquid and then, uh, you know, if you were pressed for time, or whatever, if it was raining conditions or something, I would just dump all this in there. But since most of this is not critters, most of, most of the remnants in the bottom here is just uh, non-living stuff, I'm going to do a little bit of probing and see if I can um, make sure that there's nobody in there. And so you can do that a couple different ways. You could just use a twig. Um, or you could use a little knife like this, and I'm just gonna poke through. If I see something that's potentially uh, a critter, I'm just gonna take that, put it just under the liquid surface, and that'll let it drip off into there. And I'll just go through like that, work my way through. And it looks like this is mostly just dirt. So there we go. Um, okay. And so, so my critters are all in there, ready to be processed. Now, I can, um, uh, if, if this, so this was uh, just, you know, glycerol. This is just uh, uh, food grade stuff. So I can go ahead and just pour that right there, or I can go to my sink and rinse that out. If you were using um, coolant, you can't do that, right? So what I would do with the coolant, if I had a really clean sample, I would pour, I would titrate off the the clear liquid into my my saving jar and then the last the last bit of that stuff that was where the, the critters are etc that I would pour into my jar if I wanted to give a little gentle rinse of this I could but that can't go down the sink right so so 
whatever the liquid that comes out of here, if you're using coolant, it is a hazardous substance and we should dispose of that property. At school, you could take it to the lab. In, in our case, if you guys were stuck at home, you, would, you could make a little waste uh, container and you could take that to your hazardous uh, disposal thing in town. And so that, with that, we are ready to take, take these guys in and process them.